The 2015 Polyglot Gathering is brought to you by italki. Become fluent in any language. First things first, thank you very much guys for coming. I, I appreciate your interest in my language. Just out of curiosity, how many of you speak Polish? At least some Polish. Raise your hands. Okay, I see a couple of of people, so I hope I won't uh, bore you because I will also say some curious facts about Polish. It's not only like any introduction and basic stuff, but also some some anecdotes or curious facts about Polish. So that I want to intrigue intrigue you and make make you curious about my language. <laughs> so <laughs> we will see how it goes. Um, yeah, before this conference, actually I was speaking with my flatmate and he asked me what language are you going to have your presentation at this uh, polyglot conference, right? And I answered, oh, I, it's in English and it's like a huge pity from my point of view that, you know, like we speak so many English and there is so many, like, so few presentations in languages different than English. So in the course of my, in the course of my talk, I will try to switch to some languages from time to time, telling some stories or explaining some things which are related to these languages. So don't be scared if I start to speak some different language. It's going to be only like one minute to, to, to make the lecture much interesting and not only in English. I think you will understand. Mostly you, European languages, so don't worry. You, you will understand from the context or something. Okay, so first things first. It's a polyglot conference, so from the point of view of a polyglot, why to learn Polish? Something interesting for you. Why would, why would one of you would like to learn it? So it's challenging. It's true. It's not the easiest language ever, but, <laughs> <laughs> but it's also not the hardest language. It's not extremely difficult. Some languages are much like Basque language or <laughs> or, or Hungarian are more complicated. So so Polish is not that extremely complicated. There is a huge number of speakers of Polish. It's not a very small language, like I want to give examples, but you know, you know, you know that there are very small languages in the world. Polish is spoken by approximately 45 million people, so you have plenty of speakers to, to practice Polish with. Um, besides, it's, it, it's a it's Polish language, it's one of Slavic languages, which is a huge language family, including Russian, Serbo Croatian, Czech and lots of Ukrainian and lots lots of more languages so once you've learned it you can uh, you can start with other languages or if you speak Russian or Czech or Serbian learning Polish will be easy now I will speak in, in, in Serbian a bit Sada to the body is some of the such for him as not the body now the sips come out there Znaczy ty znasz, to samo poszły trimester, a sam nauczy ją bez problemu z porozumiewać na sypską. Znaczy, z bok toga to jest ista, ista rodi, porodica języka, da? I, i, i nie ma problemu. Znaczy, uwek, uwek myśli, że kiedy mówisz ruski, czy sypsko-hirwacki, czy czeski, nie ma problemu. Poszły samo par miesięcy, trzy, cztery miesiące, możesz tak mówić, z porozumiewać na polską tak. To jest to. I so. Um, so as you see, after three months, four months of learning Serbian, I'm able to, to communicate with it. So if you speak Russian, just start the challenge of learning Polish, you will you will be like the structure is almost the same, it's very similar. Maybe okay, maybe words, vocabulary is another story, but structure, the lot the way you know we think, it's very similar. Um, Another thing, it's very popular among polyglots. I've met so many people here speaking very, very good Polish at the conference, and it's also getting popular among, so to speak, top polyglots, you know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Richard, for instance, right? And uh, Emanuele Marini, he speaks like perfect Polish. He speaks like perfect, perfect Polish. I'm all, always amazed by him. Luca Napariero, recently he also undertook the challenge of learning our language. So, you know, you can, it's, it's getting, it's, there is a passion to learn Polish. <laughs> <laughs> so follow it. Mm. Another interesting thing, influences. Learning Polish, like Poland is, you know, more or less probably geography, somewhere between Germany and Russia, right? So <laughs> also our language reflects these influences, not only the culture, not only mentality, but also the language in, reflects the influences of, you know, all these languages. But not only German or Russian, we have a lot of words from 
from these languages, but also from French, we have words like like cauchemar, which is the, like a, the bad dream, right? And it's from French, it doesn't exist in many other European languages, but in Polish it, it came somehow. And there are like about approximately 3,000 words of French origin in our language. Also approximately of 3,000 words of Italian origin, because we have like this cultural influence in the 17th century, so um, and also Spanish words, like we say sometimes, basta. Basta is like an exclamation. Everyone understands it, even though you don't speak Spanish. You know, we say basta. It's also finita. Like, you know, it exists. So, you know, there are plenty of influences, and that's that's interesting for, for every polyglot problem. Yes? Can I have something? Because something I found very fascinating with the Polish is that you sometimes take brand names and turn it into a word. Adidasi. For instance, which? Adidasi. Ah, yeah. I love that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I know that word. Yeah, like sneakers. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Sneakers, you know, like sports shoes. Yeah, we call it Adidasi. Like from Yeah. <laughs> 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 but it happens in every language, like in German, you have this, uh, it's Ovo packs, right? These uh, stoppers, it's, yeah, so, you know, sometimes... It's more in Polish than most other languages say Maybe, maybe true, maybe true. You know, in Spanish, the clinics? I am, I am, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, but even, I mean, clinics, but now since it's, it's not clinics, yeah, well, you would say clinics, but my mother would say clinics. Uh -huh. <laughs> so then it looks like it sounds like a plural. So then she would say, Dame un ping. So that's the fun, you know, discovering these uh, this, uh, connections, you know. For polygamous, I think it's amazing. For me person personally, it's amazing how many influences, how many um, words just jump from one language to another and somehow stay. And yeah. Ah. Y también en catalán. Eh, espero que un par de personas entren catalán, con María, por ejemplo. Y antes de que esta, de que esta, de que discurs, vas a pensar quiénes palabras tienen en común polonés y catalán, ¿no? Que claro que español, francés tienen un mundo de palabras en común. Y ahí para la tarde vas a pensar, vas a pensar, no sé, no sé, no no ves a respirar cada palabra, ¿no? Vas a ver a diccionario. Letra A, ta, ta, ta. advocat. Es al matés, ¿no? En polonés, es, español es abogado, eh, inglés es lawyer, catalán, polonés, advocat. Al matés. Ajá. So, you know, as you can see, in every language, you know, I can, I can find some phrase, you know, words cognates, you know, for even Catalan has some, you know, it, it's like the first, you know, word I've seen in the dictionary. And, you know, there are much more, much more words, you know, which are same in Catalan and Polish, but not in other languages. Do you know how Catalan people could be can be called uh, in Spain? Oh ah, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> well, uh, uh, say yeah. it, say oh, yeah, it. Yeah, that's also yeah. interesting. Yeah, so, yeah, that's yeah, so they are called. Like, where we went? Well, not not really. I used to live in Madrid for a long time. I come from Canary Islands. We don't use. We don't talk. We don't say that. People don't know that. But in Madrid, yeah. Could we well, hear actually, that's it. It even also yeah. So yeah, in Spain, most of the main land we say that. Uh, people from Catalonia are called Polacos. <laughs> and there's a, is, is it the, the TV program? Is it still? Yeah. Uh, Polonia? Yeah, there's one. Well, there's a yeah. TV there's program this, called Polonia. It's a satirical. Uh, yeah. called Polonia about, it's a humor, maybe you can tell more about it. It's a typical program uh, uh, from the TV yeah. uh, in that about in politics in Catalonia. Yeah, exactly. And it's called Polonia. Yeah. 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 There is more actually, you know, the connections. Like, there is this program called Varsov Varsovia, no? Like, and the Bath of Cracovia. Cracovia, the, the cracks, no? The footballistas que son no bonds, no? This is Cracovia, sí. But, you know, so there are. I think it's amazing how many like cultural connections are there in, in Europe. But yeah, that's it's very curious. You know, I, I personally, as as Maria knows, I, I love the region of, of Catalonia. You know, so that's that's yeah. that's why I also you know was very curious to trace these these similarities. Uh, anyway, so that's the perspective of a polyglot. But we have other people wanting to learn languages. People who don't you know maybe are not that interested in this. Um, relations between them. So, oh, what? Okay. So, <laughs> so it's different perspective, right? So, but anyway, 
So anyway, if you're not a member of our, you know, very, 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 very secret society, uh, you can also start to learn Polish because you can travel. It's a huge country after all. Um, it's an important language, so if you have in your curriculum, in your CV that you, that you speak it, it's always an advantage. It's not like, you know, like, yeah, it's, it's an advantage. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, actually, it's the best, you know, people maybe don't, don't always, are, are not always aware of it, but it's the sixth biggest language of European Union, so it's, it is important, I would say. Um, Whatever. Uh, people. People are, as you know, great, right? <laughs> no doubt about this. So, <laughs> especially hospitality, you know, yeah, people that yeah, dance here and then I would say, I felt that. They really yes. love and really well appreciate when you are learning. Yeah, yeah. So maybe we're not like open, like, yeah. it's not extremely open as Spanish or Italian, not at all. But, you know, we are we are very hospitable. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's for sure. Objective opinion. <laughs> Another thing, economical situation. You know, it's nowadays. You know, we have yeah, we we live in good times in Poland. So you know, after these years of war, another war, communism. You know, like for twenty five years, it's getting better and better. You know, economy is growing, and uh, there is this funny story. Like five years ago, we were the only European country with positive GDP growth. <laughs> and yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, when crisis came, you know, so every, every, every country went down, but Poland somehow, you know, up. And you know, our Prime Minister was happy to announce that, you know. And, <laughs> 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 Maybe you're not Ireland yet, but you know, we are definitely the green island of the map of, of Europe. Can, can I add another reason for learning Polish? Oh, of course. It's one of the languages which a lot of European countries would find it easy to find people to speak with. I was, I was going to, I was also, yeah, I was also going to mention it, yeah. So we have, for instance, you know, apart from countries like Ireland or Great Britain or London, like half of London, maybe not half, but you know, you can you can hear a lot of yeah, you know. So you know, um, what else? Norway, Sweden, a huge, huge immigration, right? So you have even Germany. Even, in, in Germany, Germany. even in Germany, yes, yes, and even in the U.S. You probably you probably know that uh, in Chicago, right? It's the the second most spoken language. Right. <laughs> so we have we have an, a lot, not like Chicago, but we have a lot in New York. And if I walk out of my apartment building in Manhattan, across the street, there's okay. a little news kiosk there, uh -huh. and I can buy a Polish paper there, and I can oh, also yeah. buy it on the next uh, corner, and the next it's corner, near and the next Green corner. Points, right? Or well, Not that's the green point is very okay. heavily Polish, but I, it, you know, there there are Polish people okay. running all over the city, <laughs> so I have to go maybe a couple of meters to buy a Polish uh -huh. paper. Yeah, so that's that's true. We have huge immigration, so in your city, you will probably if it's a big city, you will probably have a lot of Polish speakers to practice Polish. With. So, um, and yeah, now attack. No, before a tongue twister, we will go to pronunciation, right? So, <laughs> so that, that to, give you, to give you, let's say, a, a grasp of what our pronunciation is like, I won't tell you this story in Polish, maybe I will tell it in Spanish. I guess more of you speak, bueno, la mayoría de vosotros habla español, supongo, ¿no? Vale, entonces, una vez, qué, qué importante es la pronunciación, ¿no? Al principio manejarlo bien y, y saber cómo se, cómo se dicen los sonidos. Es que una vez una amiga me, me dice, estaba en Varsovia de fiesta, no sé qué, me, me dice que me cuenta una historia de, de un bar o de una discoteca muy buena. Me dice que, que se llama Ustavka. Y yo, Ustavka, ¿Estás, estás, ¿pero estás segura? ¿Cómo, cómo? Ustavka, sí, sí, estuvimos en Ustavka, estaba una fiesta bien buena, ¿no? Que, no y yo, pero se, no, 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 no. Pero, Es que en Polonia, no me, preguntáis, no me preguntáis por qué, pero existe una palabra, Ustavka. Ustavka quiere decir, no me preguntéis por qué, pero existe una palabra que se refiere a un encuentro de fanáticos de fútbol donde se explican las cosas, ¿no? Los, los chavales, ya no sé, quedan en algún sitio y, y disfruten, ¿no? Como, ¿no? como los de, no sé, los de... 
de ley ya avanzaba y de Polonia va a ser dos clubes de fútbol, ¿no? Sí. Ah. Vale, no sé por qué, porque no hay palabra. Ella me dice que estaba en Gustavka en este encuentro y yo, no, ya puede. Vale, después de cinco minutos descubrí que era Gustavka, Gustavka. Que para españoles puede, puede, claro, puede sonar. Es sí, claro. En claro. So, you know, this story shows that, you know, H in Polish should be pronounced. And if you don't pronounce it, and, you know, it's, you can be really, really, you know, understood. Better. And you have also a difference between S and S. So that's, you know, and you can cut into some trouble, you know, maybe not necessarily into Ustavka, but you, <laughs> you Wait, can get into some mean? trouble if you don't. What does it mean the with the A? So Ustavka, oh, so sorry. So Ustavka means like a swing. Oh. Like a swing. Oh, yeah, so it's a normal word, but Ustavka is like, oh my god, I don't want to. to <laughs> and you are going to Ustavka. Okay. Um, so to give you a graph of pronunciation, fill up a post for us. Powiem po polsku nazwy polskich miast, na przykład Wrocław, Szczecin, Łódź, Szczebrzeszyn, Skarżysko. Sorry, przepraszam. Please, proszę. Thank you. Dziękuję. And we had a lot of words starting with przy, like this przy, consonant cluster. So, um, Ukrainians, for instance, call us like a little bit, yeah, they call us sometimes pseki. <laughs> and that's true, we have like prefixes like pse, pso, pshed, you know, all the time. You can like przepraszam even, right? Or you have example, it's like przykład. Przykłady, yeah, it's examples of cities, right? Przykład, also psh. We have like every 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 second word is like like psh, like if you wanted to scare scare a cat. Psh, <laughs> so if you want to scare a cat next time, say psh, or start to speak Polish. It will be more <laughs> more so yeah. Um, and there is there is an anecdote. Grzegorz Grzegorzczykiewicz is the most famous Polish name. Very easy to pronounce, right? Grzegorz Grzegorzczykiewicz. <laughs> there was this movie. How did I? Um, how I unleashed the Second World War, like from communist times, and you know, a guy sits like interviewed by a Nazi, and the the Nazi, the Nazi is is, yeah, is asking for a name, and he goes fake name like <laughs> so the, the, the guy, and the guy goes like, oh, <laughs> like a, it was like the first. So it, it was impossible for a German to 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 to, to, to write. And, uh, right, so. It was the first poem place in the history of of, of <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So um, so I didn't want to scare you. And the Polish pronunciation is not that difficult. But maybe some of you know some Polish tongue twisters. I promised a word in my description of my talk. So for someone who who knows some. Oh, we have some. Yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't know you Really? Oh, yeah. What yeah, did you, you say? Yeah. Chciałbym, że nie odsiąść w mnie ścinie. Oh, yeah. I think you had superpowers. Is there someone who can say two or more? <laughs> no? Okay, so I promised. A reward, a mellow method in Polish yeah. for you. Yeah. <laughs> so, mm, yeah. <laughs> so there is there is a book mellow method. I also um, wanted to mention about it. If you are interested in learning Polish, it's a good good way maybe to start. It's like conversation be based method. Jimmy was was having a lecture also about it in Portuguese two days ago. So, um, so yeah. Feel free to to ask about the details. And uh, some more tank twisters, maybe. I, I was expecting someone saying like three or four, but okay. Um, Sukon Sosho, sorry. Sukon Shoson Sasha Shell. I can say it. Sukon Shoson. Sasha Shell. Perfect. Oh, that's stoops for the one with no gun. Stoops. 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 Stoops.
Paulo Irmão. 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 King Carl died for the Queen Caroline? Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry, King Carl, but, so King Carl, but I think like, um, seven out of eight of these words are the same in English, so, like King, King Carl, but Queen Carolina, like, but, it's but. Yeah, yeah. I know, King I got Carol, the first part, it was the last year it gets. But, uh, Queen Carolina, chorals of a choral color. Oh, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, and the last one, the most difficult, known by every Polish. Szczerzeszynie chrząb brzmi czcinie, a szczerzeszyn z tego słynie. Szczerzeszynie, szczerzeszynie, chrząb brzmi czcinie, a szczerzeszyn. Spego, Swinia. Ah, oh, you're talented. Are you not I can see the point of the other Can you read the four of them as a tongue twister? Okay. Sukhą szosą Sasza Szew. Szóst pokłam wanili nogami. Król Karol kupił królowej Karolinie koralek koloru koralowego. Przebrzeszynie chrząb w mi trzcinie, a szczebrzeszyn z tego słynie. I think the first one is the hardest one for you. Right, it looks so easy. Yeah, it's also, yeah, it's, it also takes time to switch from one language to another, so if I, you know, go like a couple of sentences in English and then have to switch to Polish, even, you know, it's my mother tongue. If the pronunciation is like this, I'm like, oh. I, The one thing that strikes me as you're going through this, it, it's not so much the sound inventory that seems difficult, it's, uh -huh. tr it's correlating the yes. letters to the sounds, yes. exactly. and then also yes. the, the juxtaposition is a little surprising, but not necessarily incredibly difficult yeah. mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not that I, I'm not saying I did That's, well at all, but I'm just saying. Yeah, 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 you're right, yeah, yeah, you're right. So it's, it's mostly about, you know, the same sound or similar sounds repeating in the sentence. Maybe this one is more tricky, you know, you have this step, just in your Okay, now that one is, you know, difficult. That's <laughs> very good sound inventory, but as you go, this, are not that complicated in the practice. Okay. Pronunciation. So why is Polish easy now? You know, that's not maybe it's not as difficult yeah. to prove after after showing the pronunciation. But anyway, people believe that Polish is difficult, they come to Poland and say, no, it's not difficult actually. There are, you know, if you if you just perceive it, if you see these things which are easier than in other languages, and there are plenty of them as I will show you. Polish is not scary, scary anymore. It has its feature with features which are pretty unusual, but still it has some things which are not that complicated. For instance, pronunciation. Okay, maybe after this you can say Okay, maybe it's, it's, it's difficult, but still, for instance, these sounds we have she, chi, ji, ji, they are actually all made in the same tank position. Yes. So the only thing that differs is the action. So whether it's a voiced or unvoiced, or whether it's an explosion, or like some big airflow, right? So um, so it's not that difficult to, to pronounce them once you get this tank position right. So you switch basically from sounds which you have in English, like sh, sh, z, z, like uh, show, church, pleasure, and George, right? So the same sounds, this four one, and then you switch your back position into the same action, and you get these um, sounds. And I came over this with a couple of my students, and you know they all are able to pronounce these, you know, four unpronounceable sounds in Polish after they, you know, get the idea of, of you know, this being only another tank position, not like different actions or different, only different tank position which applies to all of them. But vocals, vocals are quite easy, we have only six of them, so standard Spanish plus one uh, E, which is like between E and E. Um, and we have no articles, which is of huge help for beginners, you know, why, why would you <laughs> put an article, uh, you know, I still struggle in English or in Spanish, it's difficult for us because we have 
have no articles, just, you know, work can work without them somehow. Um, very easy tenses, we have only three, not like 16 in English or, <laughs> or in Spanish, right? So this concept also, you know, of I have done, I have done something before I have done it. <laughs> it's like for us, it's, it's past tense, you know, it's past tense, it's past, right? It's present, present, future, future, that's it, you know? Um, very easy. And also the way we create, we create past tense, it's very, very easy. It's not like, there are some irregular verbs, but few. It's easy. And future maybe is a little bit more, but not more complicated than in other languages, you know? It has some irregularities, but not that extremely. That's all, ja, na ja, also, <lacht> auf Deutsch, das ist, das ist unglaublich, ja, das, das, man muss das immer über, überlegen und das Web am Ende stellen und, okay, das ist für mich, also mein Deutsch ist ganz fließend, aber trotzdem, ich mache eine Menge Fehler, weil ich diese Satzordnung nicht so gut folgen kann, ja, auf Polnisch, das ist, das ist einfacher, kann man so wie, so wie in Spanisch, ja, also, das, vielleicht manchmal, wenn etwas, wenn man etwas, Uh, hervorheben will, soll man am Anfang oder am Ende den Satz stellen. Aber trotzdem, normalerweise ist es so ganz spontan, ja, so ist einfacher als in Deutsch. Uh, so, you know, it's easier than in English, than in uh, German, the Satzordnung or the order of the sentence. And cases, cases are also easier than in German, I would say. Also, oh, because no. I, I would say, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, is, it is my contention that they are, and I will tell you why. <laughs> because, because in German you have only four, that's true, but you have article before the word. So if I want to say, ich gehe, ich gehe in die Schule, oder ich bin in der Schule, ich muss das so vorher überlegen und das Artikel vor, vor, vor dem Wort so, so, so wissen. Ja? Und auch Polnisch, es ist so, dass das, so, dieser Artikel oder das Ende, Endung ist am Ende steht, ja, natürlicherweise. Und so, so, you know, like the, so what happens in Polish, we have no articles, so we put the ending, we only change the ending, right? So you can start to say a word, so I go, I go to school, you know, and school has an ending, I go to school, no, an ending. But you can start, I go to school, and someone can, you know, a speaker or a tandem partner or whatever can finish it for you, you know? <laughs> at the beginning, at the beginning, and then you go, right? And I've made this tandem, Polish German, for instance, you know? And it's easier for Germans to start, to stay this, you know, root of a word, and then I will play the ending, and they're like, oh, it clicks, you know, after a while. And if I learn German, it's difficult because I have to tell the article before the word, right? Mm. So it's really problematic because they don't know the message I want to say and I have to articulate the, to say the article before. So it's difficult, really. It's really, I can tell you like from my experience, it's sometimes is part, even, even though we have seven cases, more than German, but still, you know, to get over them, it's sometimes easier for Germans if they practice, you know, it's, it's an advantage, you know, that it, it goes after the rules. So, it's no. not that... Wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> not to be argumentative. However, <laughs> you left out the whole situation with numbers and adjectives mm -hmm. in culture, which is much more complicated than in German. Mm -hmm. And you cannot deny that. <laughs> it's difficult to deny that, yes. <laughs> more, more, yeah, yeah. Maybe more words are affected here by this. But still, it's because at the end, whether it's an adjective or a, or a noun, it goes at the end. So you can start telling, and you know, someone can, you know, or even, yeah, someone can, if you have a partner to practice if you can, you can <laughs> <laughs> it sounds ridiculous so I know that like we didn't talk this through before it did sound ridiculous when you started saying it but I only discovered as I'm practicing Polish with the Polish faction here that there's a lot of value in not knowing in not stopping and hesitating until the very end of your sentence and letting someone finish it but I only appreciated that here but I, I agree it does it, it does sound like a stretch so. <laughs> <laughs> it depends. It depends on you know, how, do you, how do you handle this. Maybe on what stage of learning you are, right? Also, it's I don't tell you know Polish lists are extremely easy. They are not. They are difficult, like in Serbian also, you know. But 
you know, there is this advantage at the beginning you can practice and you know, you will be like, the ending will be set by someone because it's like, it doesn't, you know, give any information. It's like information is also told by the preposition and the root of a word you already told and you know without, you know. So it's only like stylistic. In German, it, it, it gives you a message, right? Like, it's the, okay, in der Schule, in die Schule, so you know, whether moving or, you know, being somewhere. So it's, I would say, you know, it's difficult, it's more difficult than in German, probably, maybe, but, you know, not that extremely as people, people <laughs> see it at the beginning because of the reason. <laughs> anyway, spelling, spelling is straightforward, very easy, like, if you want to master English, for instance, you know, you, can, you are, like, overwhelmed by this, you know, you spell somehow, and then you want to master the pronunciation, whether British, American, whatever, and you got like, oh my god, there is so many things I don't know, because I was always studying this writing, spelling, right, and, it's difficult. In Polish, you just, you know, like phonetic script actually. So you write yeah. like in Spanish, you write what you what you say. That's a huge advantage. No dialects in Poland. So whenever you meet a Pole, he will speak to you standard Polish, like very, very standard. So you know, like I speak German, Spanish, Italian, you know, a huge variety of dialects. So you speak someone and you like even English, right? You meet someone from Great Britain and you, in my case, I'm not used to the, the accent, right? So at the beginning you can get lost, you can even, especially if you're a beginner, right? So in Polish, it's not the case. It's one standard pronunciation, articulation, intonation. You won't get that overwhelmed by the variety of it. So uh, that's also, that also helps. Intonation, okay, I won't speak, we don't have time. I won't, I won't <laughs> speak in Italian about it, but no time. Um, there you go. Interesting <laughs> So yeah, so now you know that Polish is easy and we can go to it. <laughs> so yeah, we have some too many ways to say to say number two, yeah that's true. We can also and it's, it doesn't in input both, but, you know, we have also seventeen ways to say both in Polish, you know, so don't, you know, but it's <laughs> well, they what can all, I say? They all circle well, is the same too, but at least. <laughs> 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 yeah, they're similar. Yeah, they're similar. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Actually, we use like four of them only, you know? And then go cases, so it's not that extremely difficult. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have dual number, which is, which, oh, which is indeed, that, that part is difficult. Okay, I won't say it's not, because we have some, you know, features of Polish which, which preserve from Middle Ages, for instance, you know, so Polish gra grammatic, grammar evolved, and, you know, pronunciation, everything, but some things stay. Maybe in most of languages it's like this, but in Polish, the good example is dual number. So normally it doesn't exist, but in some sayings, or even in some idioms, or even in some structures, it's still preserved. We don't know in Polish why do we say it this way, because it has no grammar explanation, but it, it's dual number which preserved from, from Middle Ages or from some old Polish, Middle Polish. Um, so we would say like, for your should guess them, yes, like an example of dual number. And people are not aware of it, you know, but it's this. It's, it's, it's. We have five grammar bases, not only three. So except from feminine, masculine, and neuter. But it's a detail, so in 90% of cases you will you will have to know whether it's masculine, feminine, or neuter, not no problem. But sometimes you have to be aware of this, uh, yeah, whether it's animated, like living object or not living, or whether it's masculine, living or, or not. Mm -hmm. So this masculine personal, sorry, masculine personal, like, yeah, like, like a boy or like a man. So we have special, special, let's say, yeah. Typical okay. yeah. psychological. <laughs> I don't know why it's like, like this, but in, not only in Polish, actually in Serbian it's, it's similar. Mm -hmm. What else? We have aspects, you probably heard about aspects, so I mentioned we don't have 16 tenses like in English or in Spanish, but we have, we have these aspects, so to, to, to communicate whether it's perfective or imperfective, whether an action is in progress or regular, repetitive, or it's like one time action, we have this, uh, this distinction, but which is not a case in, it's like a like curiosity, it's nothing special, but we have iterative. You don't have to, you know, know about it to master, to, to be fluent in Polish, but you know, there are some, some few verbs which have this iterative aspect. So they, you know, they are like repetitive action, regular, like the habit I used to something like something. Mm -hmm. Difficult to, to compare it to something like the different class, different concept, but only some of them, only a limited number of 
verbs had it before. All verbs had it, but you know, language got 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 somehow easier, and over centuries it lost in majority of cases this iterative aspect, and it's only in a couple of examples. We have very interesting thing about spelling. So as I told you, normally we spell as we have, but foreign names like Facebook or Skype, we just you know, so the root. It stays like like Facebook, but then Polish end, case ending, right? So it's <laughs> and you know, people say people write like this. Not only on Facebook when I write someone or mail, but also in newspaper. You say something like na Facebook, right? You say, so this part is in English spelling, this one is Polish. Na Skype, so you know, maybe yes. here. Ha. Huh. We can also preserve actually yeah, with e, with uh, we can the original spelling can also be preserved here. It's not Skype. So we can like with James Bond, we say like it's James and Bond. So we have James ending and James and Bond. So so Microsoft also. And it's very curious here which so it's Microsoft, we say over Microsoft, and on my about Microsoft is on Microsoft. So we you know here English spelling, here Polish and Polish ending. And the changes to zip. So also, interesting thing is like how the long words evolved. So, for instance, there is a professor, very, very famous in Poland, Miodek, and he was one, one time he was telling about this borrowing. So, like people, the more aware people are about how English is pronounced, the more it changes how how this borrowed borrowed word would be pronounced. So, for instance, word. Loop. It came like over a hundred years ago to Polish, from English, obviously. So people say club, they don't say club, club, like boom. But here people say pub because it's, it's, it's newer, right? So now we say pub. And here it's, it's you don't see somewhere in the middle, right? Because it's like 40 years ago, so people started to, to know some English, but there are some people saying bit leshy, because you know, say, uh, but some people bit leshy. So you know, you can, but you can say bitleshi also, which is which is dying because you know, now people know it's bitleshi. But at the beginning it was like bitleshi because it was spelled tele bitleshi, right? So now it's, now it's bitleshi, but still, some other people still say bitleshi. So um, so yeah. So even though now we even though we spell it English way, we pronounce it like also like the correct way. Um, and it's the only another part. It's before every Slavic language has this on m sounds like in French. Every like Proto Slavic had it. And over time, almost almost every Slavic language lost lost it, except from Polish. So in Polish, you still have on m, which are close to the Proto Proto Slavic language. Okay. I also want to, to teach you some words so that you, you meet someone after this lecture and you can say something. So, cześć, jak się masz? Cześć, jak się masz? So, hey, how are you? Um, we say yes, no. We say tak, nie. Tak, nie. And so we have this word no, which, which can be confusing, right? Because in, in Spanish it's it's, it's similar also to nie, but it means yes. So no. <laughs> yeah, and we don't use a lot of it. So be aware that you know nie is no, but no is yes. But it's not comparable to the to the French no si. I mean, it, no, you would say no when you yeah. you are answering with a yes to a, uh, a, an no, question. No, or is it no, like no, no. We don't have like do. This yeah, we same. don't have this. No, no. It's that? it's the same. It's the same as. Yes. Mm -hmm. like, well, no. Yeah, it's like no. also you can put it yeah. in some position to like it's like well or quest something like this. Like word which doesn't sound yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. like in some country of Germany. In uh, in uh, Saxony they would say not really no but like no. Oh. And that means actually yes, it's very confusing mm -hmm. for the rest of the Germany. Uh -huh. <coughs> yeah. uh -huh. Oh Oh, it just came to my mind. Yeah, so I like in German you say, for instance, naya, naya. Yeah. yeah? So in Polish we say not tak, not tak. Yeah. Also, to like, yeah, well, well, yes, well, yes. Yeah, um, I know the same from uh, German Silesian dialects. Uh huh. They use it to not say maybe uh -huh. not or yes. Oh, it's interesting. 
So, hey, the only proof that you know all these European languages come from further in the European, you know, we have like intonation also, you know, we understand if someone says mm hmm and mm hmm, mm hmm yeah. and mm hmm, we, we, can, we can get it, right? So, mm hmm, it's mm hmm, and it's mm hmm, <laughs> right? In every, it's, it's like amazing how, how this. Languages are connected after, not maybe not at the first sight, but they are. Um, what's more, we say some English words like, oh, I forgot to give you some examples, but maybe I will now. English words like we say, hey, or sorry, like, sorry, sorry is a Polish word, you know? <laughs> so, so I remember like, like today when I was in a kindergarten, you know, my parents wouldn't say me to, to me only przepraszam, right? Przepraszam. Then I go to kindergarten and people start to use this sorry word, and I'm like, I was like, oh, I, I knew that it was like a new word. I remember until now, you know, that it was this new sorry, sorry, <laughs> and you know, and people now use it. Everyone uses it, like even my parents now. You know, everyone will say sorry. Like it's it's it got you know because it's shorter than przeprasza. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that's amazing, you know how 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 this English word just came. And what else? We'll if you meet a Pole. From Warsaw, especially. So normally people learn some swear words, right? And they, they are, you know, pleased. Like that, I heard, you know, some some swear words in Polish on this campus. And I would say it's not the, the best way to to start to learn. <laughs> you know, don't make good impression, you know. To be honest, sorry. But, you know, like, so I will teach you another another phrase, another let's say conversation icebreaker. You know, we if you meet someone from from Poland, you can say something like. You know, people will laugh for sure. But if you meet someone from Warsaw, you know, there is this phenomenon. I've already taught this phrase to some friends of mine and with a huge, huge rate of success, I, as I was told. And, you know, you can start a conversation saying like, you know, so in Warsaw, we have this, like, it's a capital, right? So a lot of people from, from other cities came, you know, to study, to work, and so on. So they are called Swoi. And swoi means a jam jar. Mm. Yeah, a jam jar. So, and it's because, you know, they are considered to bring a lot of food from their mummies, right? <laughs> <laughs> like a gold bag, you know, can be, yeah. So, they are called jam jars. And if you, now, if you meet someone from Warsaw, just ask him, are you a Warsawian or a jam jar? So, Warsaw, it's, just, it's, not, it's not offensive at all. It's like, you know, more like funny and, you know, <laughs> let's say, it's not offensive at all. So, I was asked it once and I was like, oh my god, that was, that was the funniest thing I, I heard. You know, a foreigner in Polish ever. So, yes. so let's practice it. Warszawia czy Słowik? Okay, yeah. And if you, if you say to someone from Warsaw, he will laugh out loud for sure. Okay, some tricks and tips. How to, when you start to learn, what can you what can you do? Yeah, the distinction of perfect and imperfect, right? It's it's important to be aware of it. Maybe not learn by heart, but just be aware of it and try to pick, pick up, you know, the the depth. Whether it's you know the context, just focus on it. Not maybe learn by heart and try to think about it when you say it, but be aware of it and try to try to just get it out of the conversation. If someone uses it, you it works like this, I guess. So it clicks, you know, if oh, someone used perfectly in this context, okay, I will have to use it also, you know, so be aware of focus on it at the beginning. Also, avoid yes, that's a long subject, we don't have time, I will skip it, yeah. Um, standard change, focus on changes, you know, recently we started to organize these language workshops in, in Poland, so in Krakow, Bartek Janicak, which you probably, some of you know, Polish po young polyglot, he was telling also about this, this topic of you know, how certain changes in uh, vowels or consonants occur among languages, not only among one family, There's, it's like a very, very interesting topic, and among Slavic family, there is like very clear sometimes pattern, you know, so I learned Serbian and I can tell, oh, it's almost always when we use nasal vowels in Polish, whether it's a declension or um, conjugation, or even words, you know, like a root of a word, when we say on or m, like this nasal, in Serbian it would be u. Okay. In Russian I was told also it's normally u. So you know, there is this, this change. Also, our z, in Polish, is, it's z, like rzeka. It's normally r in other, like reka or rieka in, in Serbian. It's also very, very common pattern. 
coming supports follow this. Also, this way or le. So, also, example of Serbian. At the end, you have this or, sometimes like star, bossa. In Polish, it's normally l or we. And one tip, when you say we, don't do this dark l, because a lot of Russians or Ukrainians do this all, all. It's not all, it's we. It's like u. So better say u instead of le, because if you say oh, we detect, we classify it as le, as le, which, which we, yeah, we, we don't have dark l. So if you tell all, we are like, it's not le, it's u. It's a huge distinction for us, it's a huge, huge difference. So say u, well, it's like this u is almost u. It's almost, if you say u, you will get by, no one will notice. So say u, don't say dark l, never. That's, that's also what I say to my students, because every, you know, people, people, for Russians, it sounds similar. It's, it doesn't sound similar for us at all. So say who. We can practice with your name. Uh, yeah. 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 So Pavel. Pavel. Oh. Oh. Yeah. There's a there. Yeah. 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 Pavel. Like a short word. Let's see. Yeah. Pavel. Uh, or first uh, I was uh, okay. No time for that for this. But yeah, you will remember. Uh, I see. Um, some materials. Probably as always, you know, as you teach yourself, I would recommend it. Mellow methods. For sure. <laughs> so yeah, and the internet. There are plenty of podcasts or free resources like. Polish polyglot, there is this girl, she's not, she's not here, but she's, she's a polyglot, she has a website and she has a lot of articles, not only in English, but also in Polish. So for a polyglot, it may be very interesting, you know, a polyglot, you know, I myself, when I learn Italian, I use videos of Luca or, uh, or Alberto, you know, so, you know, polyglots have something in common with us. So it's, it's easier for us to, to, some, to find some interesting material, some interesting articles maybe. So if, so if they write about Polish, about something you're interested in, you will be learning Polish faster for sure. There is this podcast, Real Polish, also quite good. Is it Polish? Polish Pod 101 on YouTube. And also some cha some Polish channels, maybe on some more advanced level. So, you know, like Astrakuyo, Niekrytyk Krytyk, it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, it's very funny, but for a maybe more advanced level. And yeah, that's it. Maybe some questions. Why are Polish polyglots such excellent polyglots? That was your secret. I don't know. I would say Italian polyglots are like the, 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 more, the most successful. Yeah. I don't, but you know, that's true that in Poland we speak some languages normally because, you know, people learn. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't agree. But why do you say that? <laughs> why do you think that? Why do you? I I mean I'm sort of teasing you, but I've yeah. I've met I've met quite a few Polish polyglots that I thought were really very good. Uh -huh. And I, I mean I do think that it probably helps that you tend to have more than one language going. Yeah. But also so, yeah, I, and the grammar is very that's complicated. True. That's true. So it's it's easier to you know to switch from more complicated grammar into some easier ones. So you know it's not it's not difficult. So for instance, for Spanish, I can imagine how difficult can it be to, to imagine all this, you know, like for me to, to be able to 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 articles, right? Which are easy actually, you know, articles come out and I make tons of mistakes. Anyway, if I speak at at a very, very um, very high pace, very 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 fast i will do mistakes you know a lot and i can imagine that you know a, a spaniard or englishman who speaks polish and has to you know they could uh, make declensions can can get, get lost at some point right it's 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 difficult you know to, to switch to a concept we are not familiar with right. so maybe in case of polish we, it's easier for us because we have more of this grammar mm -hmm. features and and yeah. maybe also i think when i when i Use like a started started learning Portuguese. Uh, the one I did was uh, I studied was European Portuguese, and I found that they would always and um, the Portuguese people I met they would understand the Spanish very easily. I talked to them and then I think yeah. that, uh, that and I think that might be also the case uh, for Polish is that in Portuguese I guess I'm not sure about Brazilian but in European Portuguese they've got a lot more sounds. Mm -hmm. And we have, 
in oh, yeah. Spanish. Yeah. So there, there's a technical term, but I mean, there phonetic memory in a way is not yeah. simple, but it's so that's bigger. True. And I yeah. think that you, I mean, yeah, Rome, that's true. English has a we lot have, of sounds. We have a lot of sounds, that's true, but on mostly yeah. consonants. So, you know, consonants, yeah. we have no problem. Like, yeah, English consonants, quite easy, German, whatever, even Spanish. But vowels, like English vowels, to be able to, even German, you know, like this, Gien, right, or something like it's you know, it takes time to practice it. We don't have it, we have only six, like almost Spanish. So, that's true that you know, we have a lot of consonants, that's true, but vowels, they need those sounds. Yeah, but Polish nasal are different than French. So, in French, you have three or four, depends on how you yeah. count it, but in Polish are different. So, somewhere between some, so it's not. Like, it maybe helps, yeah. but it's difficult sound. It's different sound. Sorry, it's different. I yeah, know some people think it's similar. It's not. It's not similar. No, that means it's that your brain. It's, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's a wire, and you're used to uh, the reality of more sounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I yeah mean, that's your, true. That's your, true. Oh, yeah. your sound world is bigger. It, it, yeah, yeah, that's true. So it's easier to learn more to sounds. Yeah. Yes, that's true. Probably that's and true. And Probably it's true. Yeah. Produced. Yeah. Produced. Okay. Um, I actually have two questions. I don't know if we have time. Um, oh, maybe have. the more important one. Um, I always heard the thing that in Poland there have so many dialects, and yeah. I was wondering if you would say the same, and you did. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know. Do you have any explanation? Yeah, there's it? a. Oh, yeah. I skipped this part because you know you're running out of time, so I skipped some of yeah. of, of, of the message. So you know, Poland Polish history stuff, right? So you know, borders change and movement. After uh, you know, imagine after the Second World War, only like 30 percent of population lived in the same place as before the war. So the number of internal migration was enormous, right? So that's probably not the only explanation why, but you, you, we can imagine that it helped, you know, to to make this standard language like be spoken very widely. So, you know, people moved from, yeah, from basically from east to west, you know, and also inside of there was a huge internal migration. So still, um, because of this probably, and also communism was also like standard, right? Standard one language like in Yugoslavia, right? So kind of maybe it also helped. But anyway, before the war, accents were not that extremely, let's say, distinct. So like in Germany or in, in Italy or in France even, Spain, in every, in England even, you know, so in Poland, these accents were, I don't know why, but I think it's a case about Slavic language, so Russian has also very, very few accents, that's also very surprising, right? So maybe because of this, maybe these languages are like more flexible in terms of changing, I, I remember I, yeah, I think maybe because of this, maybe. That's, that's a very interesting question. I think there are like some, some theories why, but it's difficult. That's true that we don't have accents now. So almost, almost done. Can I have a, yeah, pre so, I yeah. have a previous slide, please? Uh -huh. <laughs> and the question, uh, how hard uh, Polish would be for a Russian speaker? I think it would be easy. It would be easy. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, so it, maybe, you know, my experience with Serbian, so I am aware that with Russian it's almost the same. So, you know, these three languages are like the same uh, distance, right? More or less. So it's, they are similar, but not that as Italian and Spanish. It's more, more, more. So what I did, what I struggled with was vocabulary. So I learned with Anki every day. Vocabulary, like memorizing by heart a lot of words. And that was the, the, because the structure, it's not that challenging. You just, you know, the structure is similar. And I think it's, it's not that easy for a Russian speaker to, to learn it. And get rid of the accent by this, you know, treat with O, oh, I told you, so don't say O. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so, well, thank you very much for.